three. Murderer George Morley escaped custody. Killer believed heading in direction of the Queensboro Bridge. All units in the blue area proceed with caution. Help you. Help you. If you jump, you'll never get away. We have a police boat standing by. Keep them away! Do you hear me? Keep them away! Isn't that George Morley, the murderer? Yeah, he gave up like a lamb. They can find a sponsor for anything nowadays. Inspector, I can fire a few shots over his head. Out of the question. Might scare him into jumping. Driver, can't you find some way out of this? No chance, lady. Traffic's backed up to 72nd Street. You haven't got a, got chance, a chance, Morley. Morley. If you don't you come don't down now, we'll, we'll wait, wait till wait you have that. to. Take them away! Hey, you, no spectators in there. Hey, how did you get through the line? I'm Dr. Hamilton, James Hamilton. Yes, what is it, Doctor? I think I can help you. No, you don't need a doctor. He hasn't jumped yet. I'd like to talk into that microphone for a few minutes. How about him, Morley? You coming down? Listen, I'm a psychiatrist. Please, Doc. I've read about Morley in the papers. He's an obsessive of highly suggestible mentality. Of what? What I'm trying to say is, he might respond to suggestion. I'd like to try. What harm will five minutes do? I've been trying for a half hour. Five minutes? All right, here's the mic. Morley, Morley. This, is this is Dr. Dr. Hamilton. Hamilton. I want you to listen to the sound of my voice. Watch the searchlight. Well, miss my plane. He's a goner for sure. Look at him. Driver, please. Look, lady, if you don't want to watch, there ain't nobody stopping you from walking. That'll be a buck eighty, ma'am. Yes, sorry, I forgot. You will do as I say. You want to do as I say. You will do absolutely nothing but listen to my voice and watch the light. You will do as I say. You want to do as I say. Your eyes are on the light. On, on the, the light. light. Watch. Watching the light. You will do absolutely nothing but listen to my voice and watch the light. You trust, trust me. me. You trust me, Morley. You will do as I say because you know I want to help you. I can help you. I can help you. Your, Your fingers, fingers hold tight. tight. You cannot open them. They, they will, will not open. open. Hypnosis. They are welded to the cable. Your hands cannot open. They are part of the cable. Welded there. Morley, let, let your, your fingers, fingers open. 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 That's right. Let them open. Let them open. Let the two officers help you. Help you. Help you. Uh, let me have your name again, Doctor. 
Hamilton. Well, uh, we'll call you if we need you. Hey, Doc, we wanted a statement. Good afternoon, Dr. Hamilton's office. No, I'm sorry, the doctor's not in right now. Uh, Dr. Hamilton? The press? Yes. Excuse me. I'm uh, Tompkins of the Globe. Barnes of the Recorder, Doctor. Uh, no comment. My paper would like a statement, Doctor. Our readers would like to know, Doctor. Doctor, whether you like it or not, your news. Is it true that you put Morley in a hypnotic trance? No, it's not true. I use no hypnotherapy, and I don't like being referred to as a Park Avenue Svengali. Well, you are a hypnotist, though, aren't you, Dr. Ames, will you cancel my appointments for the rest of the day? Like many psychiatrists, I often use hypnotism in my work. But you can't deny what so many people saw. You put that murderer in a definite trance. Morley happened to be a criminal of high suggestibility, of very low intelligence. I used simple suggestion, and it worked. It was very little more than a game they used to call animal magnetism in the days of Coué and Binet. Now, since you gentlemen won't leave, you'll excuse me if I do. One question, Doc, before you go. Please. We know he killed three young women. That's right. Now, in each case, there was no motive, no sex, no robbery. Can you tell us why? A drive to kill, that's all. The man's a killer through and through. Sorry, I'll have to leave you now, gentlemen. I'm sorry, but I think you're in the wrong car. Do you mind? I'm in a hurry. I'm not another reporter. No, I'm not. I only want to talk to you, Doctor. I'm, I'm sure you'd be lovely to talk to, but not today. Come on, out. Please, Dr. Hamilton, I need your help. You could have called my office and made an appointment. I tried, but they told me you were booked up months ahead. Keep trying. Look, Miss. Anne, Anne Summers. Miss Summers, this town has almost as many psychiatrists as taxi drivers. All you have to do is whistle. Are you always so flippant? You always use such heavy perfume? You have any trouble finding the car? None. Parking attendant? Parking attendant. Well, what is your case? I don't know. Last night... You were at the bridge. Yes, I was on my way to the airport, flying to, to London. And the traffic jam made you miss your plane? Well, yes. Almost, yes. I, I found myself unable to open my hands as you spoke. It frightens me. And then this morning I read in the papers your statements about people often being highly suggestible. Yes, but I was referring to the criminal mind. I hope you haven't made the haywire conclusion that because you're suggestible you have a criminal mentality. I don't know. It's ridiculous. Forget it. Well, there are moments when I feel I... And then I keep running away. You're a very lovely girl. And I'd much rather take you to dinner than take you as a client. I don't take friends as patients or make my patients personal friends. What I'm trying to say, Miss Summers, is I won't take you as a patient. It would only waste your money and my time. Hey, Doc! Excuse me. Hey, boy! Doc Hamilton! Excuse me if I don't leap over the net and shake your hand. Nice game, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, I think I should have to hang up my racket and resign myself to the minor pleasantries of old age. What do you have to drink? Got any old scotch? Waiting for you. Uh, here we are. Help yourself, will you? I'm not having any. You on the wagon? Uh, I've got a history department meeting tonight. Uh, I've often debated whether I should get drunk before or after these things. <laughs> Tell me, what's new in 18th century Europe? Well, Frederick II has just marched into Silesia. <laughs> Sit down, That was quite a uh, carnival act you got yourself into last night. If I knew a good psychiatrist, I'd have my head examined. Oh, what you need is a wife. I had one once. I don't make the same mistake twice. Well, it's not good for a doctor's reputation, living the way you do, Jim. What does that mean? Well, hanging around bars, picking up women. Of course, they're the best bars and the best women, but After still. After last night, I won't be able to trade my reputation for a dry martini. So let's forget it. An historian never forgets. 
And let's hope the public does. Good morning. A telephone, Doctor. Who is it? Police Department, Inspector Blackburn. Okay. Dr. Hamilton speaking. Yes, Inspector, fine. How are you? Oh, about that Morley. I see. Very possibly a traumatic effect. Well, yes. I've been wanting to study Morley for my own research as well. I'll be glad to. By all means, I'll drive up later this afternoon. Fine. Fine. Is that a new perfume you're wearing, Doctor? No, same one I've always used. Yes. Yes, this is Dr. Hamilton's office. Uh, an appointment? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, well, all right, I'll write it down. Miss Ann Summers. Well, I, I don't know. Oh, just a moment, please. Hello, Miss Summers. This is Dr. Hamilton. Yes, I can take you. Where are you now? Fine, you can come right over. Oh, I meant to tell you that you forgot to... Hello? She hung up? Both your parents were English. Yes. And you've never studied German. No. Then why should you be reading a novel in German? German? Why do you ask? These are your gloves, aren't they? Yes. Well, they were inside this book. Are you sure? My book, I don't remember. You said something about finding mysterious messages. What about them? Well, they too are in German. I began finding them about three or four months ago. Sometimes in my pocketbook and sometimes beside my bed. Did you recognize the handwriting? No, I'd never seen it before. What characteristics did it have? Can you describe it? Plain? Fancy? Sort of like the handwriting on wedding invitations. Fancy scroll type. How old are you? Twenty-five. What are you doing in New York? Business or pleasure? Pleasure, I guess you might say. Thank you. I travel a lot and never stay in one place too long. Support yourself? My father left me a substantial income. That takes care of my expenses. My mother died when I was around four. About this constant traveling, you say you keep running away. Yes. I feel driven to as though I was searching for something or some place. Do you often forget things like Leaving your things in my car? Sometimes. Often, I guess. I see. Ever been married? No. Ever been in love? Is that important? It's my business to know everything about you. No, I guess I've never been in love. How about your moods? Are you generally happy, depressed? A little of both, I guess, like everyone else. Pardon me, Doctor, but you do at the police station in 40 minutes. Well, that's right. I almost forgot. I promised the state psychiatrist to report. Would you call him Miss Ames, tell him I'm on my way? Well, I think that about does it for today. Why don't you go back to your hotel and get some rest? Uh, Miss Ames will arrange for your next appointment. I don't suppose I could interest you for dinner tonight. No, I'm sorry. Not tonight. Besides, you're contradicting yourself. No. Yes, you told me you never make your friends patients, or your patients personal friends. Oh, he hasn't said a word since the bridge. Just won't talk. I'd like to see him alone. Oh, oh, not a chance. Hey, you're visiting a murderer. Don't you forget it. He might decide to swat a fly, or he might decide to strangle you. I can handle it. Okay, Joe, open up. Mm. Got a visitor, Morley. 
Dr. Hamilton. Hello, Marlene. Would you like a cigarette? Do you know who I am? You can call me Jim. Your first name's George, isn't it? It's okay if I call you George? Can you see this flashlight, George? I want you to keep your eyes on it. You'll feel very restful. It will help calm you inside and help you to forget. Watch the light. Keep your eyes on it. It makes you sleepy. Relaxed. Sleepy. You want to sleep. To forget. Relax. And as I count to ten, your eyelids will close and you will be asleep. One, two, three, I am 18. Who taught you to speak German? That is a stupid question. You spoke German as a child? Naturally. Are you a German citizen? Nein. I was born in Vienna. Where did you live as a child? Many places. Where? We had a summer house in... in... A summer house? Ich kann mich nicht erinnern. I said to answer in English. Do you remember other houses? Tall wild chestnut trees. Wild chestnut trees? Was it in the country? Yes, in the country. Dogs barking. Your dogs? No. But a lot of dogs? Yes. Dogs, horses. Fox hunting? No. We did not live there, only... only... Only what? Was it a hunting lodge? Yes, hunting. Did something happen at the hunting lodge that you were trying to forget? Try to answer. He, he. Someone hurt you? Nine, nine, he's got his neck. Speak in English. No. No, I cannot kill you. I cannot kill you. Not Rudy, darling. Let me go first. I am such a coward and I love you so. You take the revolver first. Drop your hands. Drop your hands. Do as I say. We cannot live without each other. We must both die. You will think of other things. Something happy. What is making you smile? Who is kissing my ear? Who is kissing your ear? Rudy. Are you in love with Rudy? Everyone is in love with you. You were 18 when you were in love with Rudy? Yes. Is he in love with you? Of 
quite madly. But you must not tell anyone. Are you planning on getting married? That is impossible. Why? It is impossible. His father... Doesn't his father approve of you? Of course not. Why not? You ask stupid questions. You must know. Know what? That Rudy is already married. Did all this happen in England? No. Where? Hunting Lodge. Vienna? Yes. Near Vienna. Everything is so beautiful. The smell of spring. White lilacs. Why were you going to England? England? Is Rudy there? I do not know. When was the last time you saw Rudy? That night. That night at the hunting lodge? Yes. All right. You will slowly open your eyes. You will watch the light. Open your eyes. Open them. Watch the light. As the light fades, you will awaken. You will feel refreshed and relaxed. How do you feel? Fine. Headache? No. Good. Then tonight we'll have dinner together. And I won't take no for an answer. Club to see? Club to see. You're fond of the outdoors, aren't you? Trees, flowers? Yes, I guess I am. And you like places. You like to travel. How about Vienna? Vienna? Yes. When were you there last? Well, I've never been to Vienna. Are you telling me the truth? I see. Hey, would you like to order, Doctor? Mm, I'll give her another 15 minutes. Oh, perhaps the matter would tell. Oh, let me have a telephone, please. Oh, may we? It won't, Doctor. Uh, Garçon. He looks so familiar. Who is he? <laughs> oh, of course. That bridge thing. He's that hypnotist. Doctor, my dear. Quack. What a charming quack he must be. I've been thinking of changing my analyst. Hotel Royal Plaza? Would you ring Miss Summers' room, please? Yes, Ann Summers. Uh, pardon, Doctor. A messenger just wrote this note for you. What do you mean she isn't registered there? Ann Summers? She told me... Thanks. Hello, Charlie. Jim. Fine. You got a second? I want you to translate some German for me. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Es tut mir leid. Uh, oh, what was that last word? Yeah. Well, it says, I am terribly sorry, I cannot keep our date. Positive. And I might add, it's not very perfect German. Badly written, huh? Well, thanks, Charlie, and I hope I didn't disturb Frederick II. See you soon. Captain. Oui, monsieur. I'll have my dinner at the bar. As you wish, doctor. Something in a glass. Water. 
and uh, put it in a champagne glass. Pardon? I can't afford your liquor, only your glasses. And I'm very thirsty. Too sweet. Bring me some water. Pierre? My name is not Pierre. I thought we'd have something in common. Neither is mine. Double scotch, Joe. Yes. Two of the loveliest words in the English language. Hello, Dr. Hamilton. I'm Cullen, general assignment reporter, Affiliated Press. No comment. Mm, two of the ugliest words in the English language. Now, just a little experiment in psychology, Doctor. I sit here with a champagne glass, and I'm taken for a sociably acceptable lush. When the truth of the matter is, I'm socially unacceptable, despite the popular euphemism, a gentleman of the press. I am not a lush because of a peptic ulcer, and my doctor's orders that I can drink only milk or water. So here I sit, drinking water from a champagne glass, just because I can't stay out of bars. What do you think of my case, Doctor? If I told you, you'd worry. I like to worry. You've got a peptic. What do you want to shoot for, duodenal? <laughs> In my case, it really doesn't matter. Uh, here I am, sitting next to a big story. And he won't even talk. Office hours end at five. Yours do, not mine. How about it, Doc? Any repercussions on this Molly thing? Okay, live by that sundial of yours. But one of these days, I'm going to come into your office before five. Uh, poor who, Pierre? Live a little. Come in. Dr. Hamilton, Miss Summers. Come in, Miss Summers. I don't like my patients to lie to me. Did I lie to you? I'm terribly sorry. You told me you were staying at the Royal Plaza Hotel. That wasn't necessary. No, it wasn't necessary. Are you afraid of me, Anne? I was, a little. But I don't think I am anymore. Still, you wouldn't have dinner with me. Oh, but you don't I understand. No. At least you could have written it in English. I sent you a note. Would you believe me if I told you I don't remember sending you this note? All I remember is getting dressed to meet you. And that's all. And you don't remember anything else about last night at all? No, just the dress. I remember putting it on and... And blank? Just blank. Until this morning, I couldn't find any money for a cab. Someone had hidden my purse. That's why I was late. Did you find your purse? Yes. Someone had put it behind the curtain, pinned it up high. Pinned behind the curtains? Do you have any idea who did it? No. Tell me, Anne, has this sort of thing happened before? Yes. How about memory blackouts? Yes. For whole days? No, this is the first time. Last night, you mean? Yes. Tell me, Anne, where do you live? 87 Sutton Place. Alone? No, with a friend of the family. I stay there whenever I'm in New York. All right. Now, just relax, and we'll have another look at your subconscious. The river was always muddy. The Danube? The Danube Canal. What else do you remember about Vienna? Horrigan. What is Horrigan? Fresh wine. We would go to Grinsing and sit in the garden cafe, always in a corner and drink Horrigan. With Rudy? Yes. He would always meet me in some disguise, so he would not be recognized. My black hair. That's what he loved most. My black hair. But your hair is blonde. 
Don't be absurd. I am famous for my hair. Then you had it dyed blonde. Kishin. Anne, why do you insist that you have never been to Vienna when you know it so well? My name is not Anne. What is your name? Maria. I am Baroness Maria. Why have you taken the name Anne Summers? That is her name, not mine. Split personality. Then you are the Baroness Maria, and she is Anne Summers. Of course. And you are 18. I told you that. And you have black hair. I am very beautiful. Even Loshek will tell you. Loshek? Rudy's valet. Don't you know him? I remember the icy roads to Vienna. The coach wheels. You mean the car wheels? Coach wheels. We stopped in Baden to change horses. We... We... Go on, to change the horses. Why do you ask me these questions? I'm trying to help you. You're trying to kill me. You don't really believe that, do you, Anne? Not Anne, Maria. Maria, did you hide Anne's purse behind the drapes? Yes, I pinned it there. But you must not tell her. Why? I don't like her coming to see you. Are you afraid? You don't like me. You want to kill me. Perhaps I will kill you first. Tell me more about the lodge. Little angel. All colors painted on the wall. I'm looking down into the bedroom. The music box. It's playing our waltz. Crystal chandelier with a hundred candles dancing. Go on. It's January. Outside, the dogs are barking in the snow. But we are so warm inside. You said January. What year? 1889. 1889. January. 1889. Sophrenia, dual or split personality. Call it what you like. But I'm not sure all those names and places make sense. Rudy. Grinsing. Los check. The hunting lodge, Oregon wine, wild chestnut trees. She knows what she's talking about. I only wish I did. The Oregon section of Vienna was once pretty badly hit by the plague. No, no, uh, that was in the 17th century. January 1889. She said it twice. What was that name she called herself? Maria. Baroness Maria. I'm afraid I'm not going to get much sleep tonight. Yes? Oh, hello, Charlie. No, no, I'm not asleep. I'm sorry to bother you, Jim, but I think you better come over here for breakfast. About 9 o'clock? Hey, what time is it anyway? Well, it's 3 a.m. I think I found your Maria in a history book. Put on the coffee. I'll be right over. This is a photograph of the woman your client thinks she is. Baroness Maria Vecchia, lover of Crown Prince Rudolf of Austria. Crown Prince Rudolf? Checks with the nickname Rudy, doesn't it? Go on. The history books tell us that Rudolf's father, Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria, knew about this love affair. 
Naturally, he objected because Rudolph was already married. Now here, we have our missing hunting lodge near Vienna, mild, surrounded by wild chestnut trees. Sound of barking dogs. What could be more natural than dogs at a hunting lodge? Miling affair, the miling affair. That's ancient history, isn't it? Oh, it's hardly ancient. And it's one of the most famous scandals in all history. Look here. In the very year that you mentioned, 1889, January 28th to be exact, the valet, Loschek, discovered a scene that later rocked the entire continent of Europe. That night, at Marling, he knocked on Rudolph's door. Suddenly, there was a shot from within. He broke the door in and found Rudolph lying dead with the gun still in his hand. Beside him, shot dead hours before, was Maria Vecchia. A dual suicide. Two lovers dying because they couldn't have each other in life. Because they couldn't have each other in life. I'm not arguing with you, Maria. Of course you are the Baroness Maria Vetchera, and you died at Meierling with the Crown Prince Rudolph in 1889. It was snowing. It was Wednesday. They found us on Wednesday morning. They hid me in the shed behind the lodge. They couldn't leave me the way I was, so they put a fur coat around me. It was hideous to be treated that way. All they talked about was the scandal, that I must not be found there, even dead. Relax, Maria. You are hurting yourself. Open your hands. Open your hands. will take your handkerchief in your hand. And Dad took me in the coach back to Vienna. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no more. You win and I'm so tired. Enjoying yourself? Oh, very much. Say, do all your patients get this treatment? When they need it, admit it. Aren't you glad I twisted your arm into coming out today? Ask my subconscious. Not on my afternoon off. Hi, honey. What can I do for you, sir? I'm a very sick man. Where's the doctor? Oh, I'm afraid Dr. Hamilton isn't in right now, but I expect him to call. Hmm. But maybe I'll wait here. I don't think he's the kind of doctor that you want. Oh, he's a vet, isn't he? My uh, cat's expecting another litter, and I'm a very sick man. Have you ever tried to give away cats in the city of New York? Don't let me get on your nerves. Uh, ulcer pills. <clears throat> I've got to speak with the doctor. Now, just a minute. You can't go in there. Now, look at that beautiful couch. You know, honey, I didn't get much sleep last night. If the doc calls in, tell him I'm here. My name's Cullen. And uh, please, honey, uh, wake me up in about 20 minutes. Hmm? I'm not arguing with you, Maria. Of course you are the Baroness Maria Vetcher. And you died at Meierling with the Crown Prince Rudolph in the year 1889. Did he ask? Oh, yes, Colin. Shoot. Doc Hamilton's on a reincarnation kick. All I want you to do for me is to put a rewrite man on one extension and a shorthand gal on the other. And, brother, you've got the biggest headline since flying saucers. And dead, 
they took me in the coach back to Vienna. Anne, you must have come across the German language at some time in your life. I thought this was my day off. Think back. Are you sure that your parents never took you to Austria? As a child, I mean. Quite sure. You never studied German in college? Oh, French. Le livre est sur la table. See? Très bien. How far back into your childhood can you remember? Mm, about eight or nine, I think. No further than that. <laughs> I'm very stupid, I warned you. After your mother died, did your father bring you up alone? He never married again, if that's what you mean. Sorry, no evil stepmother you can put under your microscope. Did you love your father very much? Very much. Jim, are my lapses of memory apt to increase? That's hard to tell. I've, I've read about people who black out for six months or a year. They turn up in some little town in Nebraska or Switzerland under another name. Is that going to happen to me? Some little thing, disappointment, a shock of some kind, could put you in a very serious state. You told me you never make personal friends out of your patients. I think I can understand that now. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I'm going to send you a bill. I might even pat it to cover the cookies. It's so horrifying to think that there's this other person within me. Sort of a genie just waiting for somebody to pull the cork. At least she's a baroness. You travel in the best society. Please don't joke about it. Defense mechanism. I always joke about the things I'm most serious about. Like you. Well, I have a few defense mechanisms of my own. You still don't trust me, do you? Not even if I told you that I'm falling in love with you? With me? Or Maria Vetchera? Hey, why don't you go back to the front office where you belong? I didn't hire you to get us into a lawsuit. Yellow journalism ended 50 years ago. Look, I draw my check for bringing news. Now, do I write the story or don't I? Look, I know all about the responsibility of the press. I've been a good boy scout all my life. I'll wave flags and I'll help the old ladies across the street. But let's face it, this will make banner lines for a week. Do you want to sell papers or do you want to win merit badges? Boss, do I write the story or do I shuffle off to my favorite milk bar? I'm telling you to kill the story. Let me outline the consequences if you pin it. We've been over that. Hamilton will sue. He'll not only sue, he'll win. The trial will make good copy. And if you can sell more papers than the amount we have to settle for out of court when the time comes, you're still way ahead of the game. Bill, you've been my city editor for 18 years. I want you to know if you go ahead with this, you'll take the responsibility for whatever happens. Cullen, stop standing around wasting time. Find the typewriter. Mine is not to reason why. Mine is but to write or die. Uh, Jim, I really had a wonderful time. Glad you did. Jim, you haven't discussed me with anyone, have you? I mean, I don't want to be a case in the medical journal. Now stop worrying. Oh, Jim, if you insist on taking me to dinner, I guess we'd better change, huh? Yeah, I guess we'd better. Well, oh, Fraulein, what's the next stop? 87 Sutton Place. Oh, Cullen? Send him right in. Hi, Doc. I just came by for a statement. Did you do this? Who else? It's a lie, all of it. How could you be so moronic? I've had practice. Each regression. Coney Island psychiatry that went out with a dinosaur. Doc, you gonna sue? I want a retraction, and quick. Well, Doc, you can't retract headlines. I advise you to sue. Do you realize what you've done? That business at the bridge was bad enough, but now I'll be taken for a carnival doctor selling snake oil. Are you kidding? Why, <laughs> this will make you the biggest head mechanic in town. Get out of here, Cullen. Look, Doc, if I were you, I'd strangle me. But supposing it, it really is reincarnation, well, then it's, it's just too big for you to sit on your Park Avenue office. Get it straight and print it straight. You've blown a fairly simple case of split personality into a hoax. Reincarnation has nothing to do with it. Doc, can you prove it? Look, how come your patient knows all about the Meierling affair? And how come she can talk in German? That can be explained. Well, explain it. Get out. Well, I still advise you to sue, Doc. But, uh, Alf Wieters in. Oh, Doc, uh, 
the other papers will probably be in your neck any second. Uh, maybe you should get out of town. Might do you some good. Miss Ames, I am not into anyone. Oh, Miss Summers? No, I'll talk to her. Put her on, please. Sorry. How could you do such a despicable thing? And you've got to believe me. I. And who else did you discuss my case with? The janitor? And listen to me. The sound of your voice makes me sick. I've mailed a check to cover your services. You can cancel the rest of my appointments. I never want to see you again, her doctor. Anne. Anne. Maria. Tell Miss Summers, Dr. Hamilton is here. Miss Summers has gone out, sir. I'll tell her myself. Now, see here, yes, sir. Where's her room? What is going on here? Where's the gentleman? I've got to see Anne. I'm Dr. Hamilton. Yes. I read the papers this morning. Anne is in danger. Philip, you will show the uh, gentleman, as you call him, to the door and show it. Will you listen to me? She's in danger, I tell you. Take me to her. Philip, I think you'd better call the police. Yes, ma'am. If Anne has been in any danger, it has been through you. I would very much appreciate your saving me from the embarrassment of the police. And you're wasting your time. Anne left here a full 20 minutes ago. Where'd she go? I have known Anne and her family since she was born. And in all those years, I have never practiced asking her where she was going. Goodbye, sir. Lady Fitzmaurice. Goodbye, sir. I'll go quietly and cause you no trouble if you'll allow me two or three minutes to talk to you. Philip, cancel that call. Yes, ma'am. There is still a bit of sun in the parlor. You may sit down. Thank you. Young man, what have you done to this poor girl? I'm concerned with what she's apt to do to herself. Lady Fitzmaurice, have you ever known Anne to have visited Vienna? Never. But she speaks the German language. Badly, but it's German. That is quite impossible, sir. She was brought up in the care of private nurses. English nurses? Well, quite naturally. Might one of them have been an Austrian? I do not like this line of questioning. There was an Austrian. Perhaps there was. I've forgotten. You haven't forgotten a thing in 60 years, have you, Lady Fitzmaurice? 72 years. How old was Anne during the domestic reign of her Austrian nurse? Anne must have been uh, almost eight when her father threw that Viennese hussy out of his house. Do I have to ask why he dismissed her? If you do, I shall not answer you. I understand. Could Anne have become aware of what was going on between her father and her nurse? It's not likely, sir. But it's very possible. Anne might have come upon them at some indiscreet moment and been shocked. Then Anne picked up a smattering of German from the nurse. An impossible language. The nurse must have filled Anne's head with all sorts of romantic tales. Among them, the story of Meyerling. A handsome crown prince and the beautiful Baroness Maria Vetchera. What more does it take to impress a child's mind? A loathsome affair. Then the shock of seeing her Austrian nurse displacing the memory of her own mother in her father's arms. I will not listen to this. Can you imagine the workings of Anne's mind? The hatred she must have felt for that nurse. 
And as Anne grew older, those hateful images must have disappeared from sight. A memory block. Today, Anne has forgotten that the nurse ever existed in her life. And good riddance, sir. I want to thank you, Lady Fitzmaurice. Would you have Anne call me the moment she returns? I think you understand how important it is to her. There's a gentleman here from the police, sir. Well, thank you, Charles. Would you send him in? You may come in, sir. Dr. Hamilton? That's right. Lieutenant White. Homicide. Homicide? I don't have a warrant, but if you insist, I'll get one. Warrant? Homicide? Say, what is all this? It's about Ann Summers. Ann? What's happened to her? Well, that's why I'm here, Doctor. Here's a translation of a letter we received this morning. It was written in German. To whom it may concern, this is in the interest of Ann Summers. Dr. James Hamilton has been trying to, to kill her. My mind cannot overcome the fear that he has at last succeeded in his deed. Signed, Maria Vetcher. But this is ridiculous. Psychiatrically, and We're not interested in the big words, Doctor. We're interested in the facts. But there are no facts. This letter suggests the possibility of your having killed Ann Summers. Well, maybe it was written by a crackpot. Maybe not. Maria Vetcher doesn't exist. She's a figment of Ann's imagination. Before you start accusing me of anything, why don't you check? Oh, we have. There's no such person. Look, Doctor, we're not accusing you of anything. I'm just here to check. Okay. Help yourself. Familiar, Doctor? Oh, traveler's checks. About $2,000 worth. All signed by Ann Summers. That makes them negotiable, doesn't it? Oh, handkerchief. Looks like blood. It is. I can explain that. It's Ann's handkerchief, all right. She cut herself in my office the other day. Relax, Doctor. Relax. We haven't got a murder case. Yet. A murder case? But we do have exhibits A, B, and C. But the police do not share the cafe gossip that Miss Summers, possessed by the person within her, has run off in search of her historical lover, Crown Prince Rudolph. How does it sound? You must be proud of yourself. Could get the Pulitzer Prize. For fiction. Okay, I will. Right, Captain. Yes, sir, I understand. <sighs> Missing persons is drawing blanks. Well, she might have left the city. If she's alive, we'll find her. And if she's dead, we'll find her. Am I under arrest? I'll let you know when. Don't be impatient. Imagine, I said, I could have been Mary, Queen of Scots. It's getting terrible, really it is. Why, it's one thing to know who your friends are, but it's another to know who they were. Charlie, you're working at school. 
I can meet you at the golf room for lunch, okay? Fine. Fine, that's better. Say, why don't you ride with me? They may need your car for something important. You say the police is still after you? Oh, I hate to bring this up again, Jim, but you've got to get that girl off your mind. Or are you in love with her? I'm in love with her. That's unfortunate. I can't work, I can't sleep. On a diet, too? Not hungry. Now, tell me, What's new with that Morley fella? Find anything new inside that criminal mind of his? Completely asocial. I have a few more tests to run before they send him to the electric chair. This fruit salad's delicious. I talked to the police lieutenant last night. They had a report Anne had been seen in New Orleans, but it didn't check out. They're bound to find her. If she's alive, I'm beginning to wonder myself. Jim? History is a game of patience. So is life. She'll turn up. Sure. Don't look now, but my fan club just arrived. She's bound to read something in the papers. About your being suspected of murder, I mean. Look. Reincarnation or not, she'll be decent enough to show her face and get you off the hook. That's just it, Charlie. The person of Maria has taken full possession of Anne. And Maria hates me. She's loving every minute of this. One woman with two such different personalities. And it's Maria that you've got to look for, not Anne. That's what I keep telling the police. Miss, you know, they're stymied until they can find a body. How about the Crown Prince Rudolph? What about him? <laughs> Maybe your Baroness Maria's gone off looking for him. Cut it out, Charlie. <laughs> Just a thought. What you said before is right, though. The only thing is... The only thing is what? Hey, wait a minute. Bait. Bait? You can't catch fish without bait. If she's alive, I can bring her back by finding Rudolph. <laughs> Come on, Jim. Eat your salad. No, Charlie, I'm serious. That's ridiculous. Finding Rudolph? Not finding him. Creating him. Jim, boy, you need a rest. I need only one thing, Charlie. I need a killer. Subconscious will remember everything I say. Your name is Rudolf von Habsburg. You are the crown prince of Austria. Repeat that. My name is Rudolf von Habsburg. I am the crown prince of Austria. Repeat that to me. No, Maria. I would rather die with you than live without you. You know what to do with the gun then, don't you? Yes. Everything I have put in your mind will remain in your subconscious. You will remember nothing when you awaken. Hi, Colin. Thought I'd find you here. I want to talk to you. I think I have a story you might be interested in. Beware psychiatrists bearing gifts. Save the cracks for your column. Is reincarnation still selling papers? Mm, getting a little stale. Could use a shot in the arm. Would it make headlines if I told you that I found the reincarnation of Crown Prince Rudolph? What are you trying to hand me? I'm serious, Cullen. 
One chance in a billion and you found him? <laughs> Not even my readers would believe that. I did. Think of it. Two lovers reunited after nearly a half a century of death. Uh, Sam, bring me a scotch. Reincarnation with a sex angle. <laughs> Make it a double, Sam. Who is your crown prince? That's my secret. You want to hear the recording? Well, if I print it, you know what it does to you. Sam, put these on my tab and drink them yourself. Come on. If she comes here first... I shall call you. She's got to come back. You must love her very much. But you are ruining your reputation. I don't care who thinks I'm a fraud, as long as Maria believes me. I hope she comes back for your sake. You're doing a very unselfish thing. It's got to lure her back. She'll come back for her crown prince, and then I'll kill her. News broke this afternoon that Dr. Hamilton has come up with a living reincarnation of the Crown Prince Rudolph of Austria. Some of the principles involved in this story, which has become the sensation of the country, are here on film, brought to you exclusively by this television station. Here is the house at 87 Sutton Place, the last known location to be visited by the girl who calls herself Maria Vetura. And here is the beach house on Long Island, belonging to the controversial Dr. James Hamilton. Caught here by our news camera is Dr. Charles Gore, the historian friend of Hamilton. <laughs> Looks like he's in quite a hurry, doesn't it? What will Dr. Hamilton come up with next? Turning to the European. The Crown Prince and magic, isn't it romantic? I suppose they'll get married? In this life, I mean? How do you like that? The Crown Prince, my foot. He'll lose his license, that Doc will. Believe me, if I was the commission, I'd pull him in on the Funko charge. Oh, you were the commissioner, big man. I swear to it, Bill, I don't know what pigeon he dug up for this Crown Prince bit. Could have been anybody. Hey, even you. Bad chance. Look, uh, see if you can find out who. I'll keep the story open. Now then, uh, what about the criminal he's been brain reading? Might be something for the feature page. Yeah, you mean Morley. I had Doc Tom Hamilton tail by one of our fellas the past two weeks. Came up with some good information. Let's see, on Monday, uh, he saw Morley from 10 to 10.40, and then again on Thursday, and then three times last week. Hey. What? This could be our pigeon. Morley, it figures. The crown prints behind bars. Yeah, think of that in print. Listen, I'll go over and check on this, and if it's true, watch out. I will be behind the book. At the knock on the door, you will pick it up and fire. You will pick it up and fire after the knock. Now look here, Doctor, we can't go along with that. You will close your eyes and hear nothing. No sounds, nothing. I told you I must have a killer mind for this. I understand that, Doctor. Are you sure that you told the district attorney exactly what you're doing? Look, the only reason you haven't pinned a murder on me is because you can't find the corpus delicti. If you charge me and Miss Summers turns up suntanned after a few weeks in Florida... Yeah, you could pin our ears back in any court. Well, our case against you is closed the minute that we see Miss Summers alive. All right, let's get on with it. You can hear me. You can hear my voice. Open your eyes. Hi, Doc. Just in time for the four star. Hi, right, Cullen. Doc. I'm going to give it to you straight between the eyes. Morley's your crown prince, isn't he? I thought so. Well, we'll see you around. Cullen. Don't deny it. 
But I want you to know I sure feel sorry about all this. You know, the public is going to raise a storm. Cullen, listen. Now, you know, some people are born to make news. Some people are born to write. Listen, there's a bigger story in this if you'll string along just a little bit longer. There just ain't no bigger story. Is it a story of Ann Summers is found alive? That's big, I'll say, yeah. You'll scare her off if you print that story, believe me. Miss a couple of headlines, Cullen, for her sake. And I'll give you a call the moment she turns up. You know, Doc, I think you're scared. I'm scared. Call my desk. They'll know where to find me. Where is he? Hello, Maria. Where have you been? I don't believe you have found him. I have found him. It's a trick. You are trying to trick me. If you believe that, why did you come back? I'm glad you're back, Maria. I will take you to him. time of night to be doing a thing like this. It brought her back. Aren't you satisfied? Yeah, that's her, all right. Did Cullen get here yet? Yeah, he's in the press room. Uh, give me about three minutes, then bring Molly in. Uh, where can I take her? Right there. You can use my office. eyes on the light, on the light, your eyelids are closing, slowly closing, it makes you sleepy, sleepy, sleep, open your eyes, when you open your eyes you will be in Meyerly. Will open your eyes and see the little angels painted on the walls. The crystal chandeliers with a hundred candles dancing. There is your music box. What is it playing, Maria? I will leave you. The 
next person you will see will be the Crown Prince Rudolph. You will see only your Rudy. Hello, Doc. You did call. Oh, hello, Cullen. Just a second. Hello, Doc. Here he is. Hello, Morley. 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 Who are you? I am Crown Prince Rudolph. All right, Warden. Will you take off the cuffs, please? You will do as you were told. You will walk through that door. And you will find Maria. I have been followed. The Emperor sent Loshak after me. So now your father has a valet, a lackey, spy for him. Oh, Rudy, you are so strong. It's so good to be in your arms again. Maria. But you never smile, Rudy. Even when you kiss me, you never smile. I have been told never to see you again. Oh, but now we are such a scandal. Yes. Things are going worse with my family. I know the Emperor hates me. But what can we do? This is the only way. No, Maria. I would rather die with you than live without you. But I am only 18. So young to die. There is no other way. use a real killer. Why? Because only a real murderer would have pulled that trigger even under hypnosis. And you will slowly awaken. You will forget everything that has happened in this room. Maria Vetchera is dead. Dead, Anne. You will awaken. You are coming awake. You feel refreshed. Awake. You are Anne Summers. Anne? 